Hello and welcome everybody. This is Genomics Bootcamp where we speak about genomics from the beginner's perspective. My name is Gabor Mesaros and today we will speak about and do analysis for the so-called principal components. So principal components analysis or PCA is the name of the game for today. We will actually do a full scale analysis starting from the Blink genomic data doing a quality control and later on do a principal component analysis and visualization of the results. This is actually a quite nice analysis as it is quite often done for the uh, genomic diversity type of analysis or in general if you want to see what uh, do you have in your data. So this is in any case a very good type of analysis to do and also it's uh, uh, quite a nice, quite a nice showcase uh, how you can combine various uh, programs and approaches to achieve uh, a rather nice uh, results that also tells quite a bit about your data as well. So I'm quite uh, excited how this will turn out and uh, well just see what happens. Here we are back in R to do a principal component analysis uh, with genotype data. In this uh, session, we will do uh, quite a bit of uh, well, computation and uh, also with the, with the longer script and also just to reduce the time of necessary typing uh, to R. So I already prepared the script, uh, which I will share with you if you want to uh, well, just use a similar one and maybe do some modifications that are needed for your own data. But anyway, so just so that I don't need to type everything out, uh, then uh, I, well, I just uh, prepared it already. Actually, the beginning of the script was uh, discussed in a previous video. So up to the line uh, 14, this is really the quality control that uh, we'll need to do uh, before every uh, analysis with, with the data or with, with any kind of data really. So we are clearing out the workspace just to be sure setting the working directory and running uh, quality control. So here we see that we are actually deleting SNPs that have more than 10% missingness, deleting also animals that are missing more than 10% of their genotypes and also the minor alley frequency. If it's less than 5%, then all these are also deleted and then we create in this case a fed and map file with this uh, with this name adapt map top so we can actually uh, run this part uh, and you'll see that it's uh, uh, actually uh, coming up uh, quite nicely with the expected uh, 48000 uh, variants and uh, 4 uh, 4532 uh, animals, uh, some animals and uh, individuals uh, removed. So some individuals and SNPs removed because of the criteria we have uh, specified. This script uh, combines uh, the use of Blink and R in the uh, in same script. So this is also why it is quite useful to have uh, the actual Blink uh, runs in, in an R script because then you can use a single script file for everything. Now uh, the PCA itself, so the principal component analysis, is really just a way to reduce uh, uh, the dimensionality of the output to a well interpretable plot, really. It's, a, it's an XY plot with, a, with dots on them. Now in our case, the high dimensionality plot uh, or high dimensionality data that we will be talking about is that uh, is the genetic distance between the individuals. So this uh, genetic distance is also calculated by a Blink, and the key option here is really the dash dash uh, distance matrix that creates or well, creates a text file with the genetic distances between each uh, of the individuals. So we can uh, run this and it will take uh, well, uh, a little bit of time, but then it will create uh, a matrix of uh, 
4,532 times 4,532 uh, individuals with uh, the individual uh, distances be be between each of these. So this computation already finished. We can also look it up on the on the hard disk, uh, and so this is the uh, data for PCA. MDIST is the file to to look for. The data for PCA is called like this because uh, this is the output file or output name that we specified in the Blink uh, Blink run. Now, so it's a uh, it doesn't show up as such, but it's actually a text file with uh, uh, lots of numbers in them which are the pair, pairs, pairwise genetic distances between each of the individuals. So you see that this, uh, the interpretation of, of this file is borderline impossible with uh, yeah, just by, by looking at it. So that is why we need to uh, use some uh, other techniques. And uh, this technique will be the principal component analysis with the uh, CMD scale function, but we will get, uh, get to this. So first, what we need to do uh, is uh, load our data. So we will actually uh, load this uh, data for PCA MDIST uh, to, uh, to the computer. Uh, which will then uh, pop up in, the, uh, in our uh, environment. Other things that we uh, need to load uh, just for the names uh, names of the breeds uh, that are conveniently specified in the FUM file, the first column of the FUM file, and also the individual names uh, that are the second column of the FUM file. Now comes the computationally most uh, demanding part of the, the job, that is uh, with this uh, CMD uh, scale uh, function, that is uh, basically uh, doing the or computing the principal components based on uh, multi-dimensional scaling. So this might take a while so uh, I will just cut back when the, the computation is, fin is finished and we will continue from there. Good so the CMD scale uh, computation is finished uh, that was done with the CMD scale function from R. So basically uh, our main results are actually computed already with this MDS population data being available, but what we need to do is to actually extract the eigenvectors and eigenvalues and visualize them. So that is what we are uh, going to do uh, in the follow-up uh, steps for the uh, eigenvector populations that are, we are just extracting, extracting the uh, points that are needed for the uh, visualization. Now, one other thing that is uh, quite uh, nice uh, in these uh, plots, that is um, we are computing the amount and or proportion of the variation that is explained by the first and the second principal component. So this is then done in this line uh, 38. And uh, with all of this uh, uh, in place, uh, we actually are ready for the visualization of the data. Uh, we will use uh, the tidyverse uh, package or, or the ggplot uh, package that is a part of the tidyverse uh, in R uh, to visualize our, our results. First, what we need to do is uh, is uh, to load the tidyverse uh, package. Actually, this is a quite nice uh, formulation uh, that I use all the time. Uh, it is basically the loading of the tidyverse package is the, just the line 44, but this uh, setting actually uh, a quite a nice one uh, that uh, actually first checks if uh, any of the package that is specified here is installed in your computer. Uh, if it's not installed, then it installs it and loads it, proceeds with the loading. And if it's installed already, so then it, this, is, this step is skipped and then just proceeds with the loading. So just having packages in this format, I just ensure that uh, all of them are 
installed uh, when I when I need them. But basically, the loading of the tidyverse package is just the just the line forty four. So then, uh, what we uh, need to do is uh, using the ggplot package on the eigenvector populations uh, data and uh, and visualizing it in a in a way of an xy plot as a pca plot uh, requires so you see that the visualization is quite quick and also it's automatically shown on the lower right side uh, in the plot panel this uh, coming up uh, in a, in a PCA plot as we can also zoom it out. Uh, right now we do not include the legend uh, for this uh, uh, for this plot uh, because uh, it consists of very many uh, populations. So actually the legend would take the whole uh, screen or the actually the whole whole plot because we are having hundreds of populations uh, shown here. But uh, basically uh, what we are having here is uh, is the plot and the relationships among the worldwide goat populations. Now, uh, if you remember, this uh, data is coming from the ADAPT map uh, project. Uh, it's freely available, but of course there were publications done on this, uh, on this data already. And uh, also the PCA plot was also uh, done uh, because, well, this is just one of the, one of the things that we uh, do most of the time as the, among the first ones uh, in the uh, diversity and e-diversity study. And so this was also published in this uh, paper, Choli et al. Uh, 2018 in the Genetics Selection Evolution uh, Journal. And uh, here, if uh, you go a little bit uh, lower, among many other things is also a PCA plot. That is, a, this is the 4A that uh, I would direct your attention to. And so this is something which is quite similar to our, our thing. So on the left side, the Jolly et al from the paper and on the right side are plot you see is quite uh, similar. Uh, so in the paper, of course, they went uh, with the more sophisticated approach that uh, they have just one, uh, actually one point or, or, this, or the center point for each read in one, uh, uh, as one point. And also then the uh, color scheme is, is a little bit different. Uh, with the continents uh, being denoted with specific colors than, rather than a specific breeds, which makes the plot uh, somewhat more um, understandable, just because, as I mentioned, there is a lot of breeds in this, uh, in this uh, plot. So with this, uh, I think we have uh, achieved our, our goals uh, and uh, well, did a PCA uh, analyzes and uh, visualized uh, the data. Of course, this was one of the options and there are actually other options as well to, to do principal component uh, analysis. And of course, there is plenty of other options uh, to analyze uh, the data with uh, all kinds of methods and approaches, of course, depending on what uh, you want to do. If you are interested in any of uh, the follow-up methods uh, of the practical genomic data analysis, then uh, just uh, well, let me know in the comments. Uh, and uh, certainly I will try to do some more demonstrations of practical data analysis. Also, if uh, they you would have any comments or questions to this uh, a particular approach uh, for the PCA, then uh, I'm, I'm happy to happy to answer them. And uh, yeah, as mentioned, if, if you want to do so, see something more, then also mention uh, the, uh, those in the those wishes in the comments. So this was the famous principal component analysis and how you do it and visualize the results. 
Uh, if you need the, the, the code for the script, uh, I will give it to you. I will uh, put a link below where you can actually find this exact script and some explanations to it. For today, uh, well, I want to thank you for your time. If you enjoyed the content and want to see more of a similar sorts, then I just encourage you to push the like and the subscribe buttons uh, for this video. And uh, yeah, well, see you next time.